My name is William Turner, and I'm the founder of wikiaudio.org, and I'm doing this video on behalf of Pyramind. If you look at the screen, there are three squares. Each square generates an oscillator. Below each square is a pitch slider. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to demonstrate the basics of programming this software synthesizer with JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and the Web Audio API. So I've launched an empty text document. I use a text editor called Sublime Text 2. If you don't have a text editor, you can use Notepad on Windows, or you can use Text Edit on the Macintosh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save my empty document. So I'm going to title my document synth.html. .html is an extension that's needed for web browsers to recognize the document. The next step is to add relevant HTML header information to the top of our document. This ensures that web browsers recognize this as a legal working HTML5 document. When I type in code, I'll expect you to pause the video and type it in yourself. The next thing we need to do is create what's called a div tag. Div tags can be styled and turned into shapes such as circles and squares using CSS. But first, we need to give our div tag a unique ID. Now if you launch the file in the web browser, you'll notice that there's absolutely nothing there. Let's change that and turn our div tag into a square that we can see using CSS. The first step are to create two style tags. You need to create an opening and a closing style tag. The next step is to create what's called a CSS block that's connected to the unique ID of our div tag. And you do that like this. We can now style our div by adding code in between these two brackets. Let's start with the background color. And now I'll add the width and the height. If you're wondering what the PX is, it's an abbreviation for pixels, which is the value that we're changing. Now if you save this and you launch it in a web browser, you should see your square. The next thing we can do is we can add our pitch slider to our HTML. What I've added is an input tag, and I pre-populated it with values that will be necessary to control our pitch slider. You can view this by launching the web browser. So now we need to add the JavaScript code to give our synth functionality. So the way that you do that is you have to create two script tags, an opening script tag and a closing script tag. In between the script tags is where you add your JavaScript code. At this point, you should probably pause the video and type in the code that I just added. I'm now going to launch our document in a web browser to make sure that our synth works. And it does. So looking at this code, what exactly is happening here? 
Well, the first thing that we did is we created our div tag, which was empty. It was unstyled. Then we hooked our ID to the ID of the CSS. We then styled that information, which allowed our div tag to become an orange square. Additionally, we added an input slider tag with pre-populated values. We then added our JavaScript code. So how does the JavaScript code work? Well, the first line of code, this code right here, allows us to access the Web Audio API. And what the Web Audio API is, is it's basically a bunch of C++ code that resides in the browser that contains objects which would be used in a professional audio environment, such as compressors, oscillators, convolution reverb, filters, and a host of other things. This first line of code, called the Audio Context, simply tells the web browser that we're about to use the Web Audio API. The next line of code allows us to take the unique ID of our div and reference it. We then store that in what's called a variable. The equal sign that you see does not mean equal to, it means assignment, and it's called the assignment operator. So in effect, what we're doing is we're taking the ID of our div tag and we're storing it in a variable called OSC. Below where it says osc.mousedown, what this code says is that when you push the mouse down on our div, something needs to happen. And in our case, it launches a block of code that plays our oscillator. So when I push the mouse down, this information gets launched. When I take my finger off the mouse, this information gets launched. And if you notice, it says oscillator.disconnect, which means we are disconnecting the oscillator. So within the on mouse down function, this information gets launched when you hold the mouse down. So what's the first line of code in the on mouse down function? This line of code takes the pitch value of our slider and it stores it in a variable called OSC pitch. The next line of code simply creates an oscillator. The next line of code assigns that oscillator a waveform type. And if you're familiar with audio synthesis, you know that there are four basic waveform types. There's square, saw, triangle, and sine. Well, you can access all four of those waveform types by changing the value of the oscillator type to a value between 0 and 3, so you have access to all four types. So let's change this to 3. Two. One. And zero. The next line of code is the frequency value. You can typically type in any value you want here, but in our case, we have an HTML slider determining the pitch we want to hear. So here's the demonstration of the signal flow. Our input slider has an OSC pitch ID. That ID is getting stored in a variable, and that variable is being assigned to the oscillator frequency value, hence allowing us to control it from our slider. This line of code right here equates to the Web Audio API's output. Whenever you hook up something to the audio context destination, you're in effect hooking it up to the quote unquote speakers of the Web Audio API. The very last line of code, oscillator.nodeon, simply initiates the oscillator. Below, in the osc.mouseup function, this code is launched when you take your finger off the mouse. And if you notice, it says oscillator.disconnect hence disconnecting the oscillator. So in retrospect, I think you can see that with a relatively small amount of code, you can build a rather sophisticated software synthesizer in the browser. 
My name is William Turner, and this has been a Paramind presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it and found it educational. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.